You got extra batteries for the camera? Sure. We're just getting ready to head out to downtown Winnipeg to film the city's most haunted locations. And I can't take all the ghost busting equipment with us because we're going on our bikes. What do you need all that crap for? I told you, it's just fucking toys. But the PKE meter is small enough, so I'll be taking this with us to track down some ghosts. Leave that crap behind. We gotta get going, we're gonna lose daylight. Hello, I'm Woody Carlsberg. Today's headlines. Local YouTubers have gone missing while filming a documentary on haunted locations in downtown Winnipeg. Only their cameras have been found, and the search continues for the missing men. The only clues as to their whereabouts lies in this footage, which, for some bizarre reason, was found edited to completion. Hello and welcome to another episode of Frightfully Forgotten Horror Movies Halloween Special. And we got a special episode for you today. We're filming on location, showcasing some of Winnipeg's most haunted sites. In downtown Winnipeg. Downtown Winnipeg is like haunted as hell. There's so many haunted locations in downtown Winnipeg. So we just rode our bikes down here. Don't need to worry about paying for parking. Locked up our bikes and literally walked to all these different locations, which are blocks from each other. It's like Spook Central down yeah, here. Yeah, yeah, basically. Spook Central. We're gonna take you on a little tour of the haunted locations downtown Winnipeg. And we're gonna start with the Fort Gary Hotel. And here we are at the Fort Gary Hotel on 222 Broadway. It is probably Winnipeg's most famous haunted building. Famous for a few reasons for its haunting and because it's the biggest luxury hotel in the city. It was opened in 1913 and has hosted dignitaries from around the world for years. Royalty has stayed here, actors. Even till this day, whenever there's a big movie shoot here, the stars stay at the Fort Gary Hotel. One reason they think this building is haunted is because when they built it, it was very unsafe working conditions and many workers died while building this place. So there's spirits there even before the thing was finished. The most famous story is from room 202 on the second floor. Newly married couple were staying there for their honeymoon. The new bride had a headache and her husband went out to go get her some pills and he never came back. She fell asleep and woke up to only find news that her husband had died. He'd been hit by a vehicle while getting her some medicine. She then hung herself in the closet in room 202 and apparently haunts that whole floor ever since. People have reported feeling someone get into bed with them at night in room 202. And on the second floor, people have seen floating green orbs, hear footsteps, and see ghostly apparitions of a woman. There's also a story about a chef murdering a fellow employee in the basement. And the basement stays off limits until this day. Some of the other ghosts sighted in the Fort Gary Hotel are that of a spectral singer seen in the Palm Lounge the ghost of a long dead performer who had allegedly been shot in the head. Some people reported feeling a physical pain in their head when the ghost was nearby. In the Broadway room, meanwhile, staff and guests had reported sightings of a phantom diner. The Fort Gary Hotel is still a high class hotel till this day. As you can see, it's bustling down here. There's all sorts of fancy luxury cars parked here. It's where the rich stay and also where the ghosts stay. The bikes are still here. <laughs> Downtown Winnipeg, you never know, baby. <laughs> Behind me stands the Masonic Temple in Winnipeg on Donald Street, and it was built in 1895 to house the Masonic Freemasons up until 1967. Although no real tragic event occurred to cause any sort of hauntings, it's thought that all of their rituals maybe stirred something up. It did reopen in the 70s as Mother Tucker's restaurant, and from there we get all of the cool stories and hauntings. Reports of people answering the phone and they hear Masonic chants at the other end of the line. Glasses being thrown off the bar, things moving, shadows seen. There's footsteps being heard upstairs when no one else was in the building. Perhaps the scariest story from the Masonic Temple is that from a staff member who was working alone one evening. They claimed to see a man in a big mustache and old-fashioned clothes in their restaurant after closing hours. In an attempt to tell him that they were closed, they followed the man up to the attic only for the man to disappear out of thin air. They found a small child's coffin in a secret space in the attic where the man disappeared. It is believed the coffin was used for Masonic rituals. The building is now empty, and the ghosts only have their own company to keep. 
The Masonic Temple has been empty since 2006, but it has been designated a heritage site. So it won't be torn down. If anything, it'll be renovated when the time comes. Downtown Winnipeg, and our bikes are still here. <laughs> And here we are inside the Walker Theatre on Smith Street. It opened in 1907. It was built by Courtless Powers Walker to showcase the best vaudeville and opera that the world had to offer. Winnipeg was a big vaudeville town back in the day and everyone played here. Houdini was at the Walker Theatre, Bob Hope, Louis Armstrong. It's rumored that Charlie Chaplin and Groucho Marx first met in this building. It's apparently haunted by Lawrence Irving and Mabel Hackney, an acting couple who did many, many, many shows at the Walker Theatre. And they were just finishing up their last show and about to head back home and boarded a ship called the Empress of Ireland, which sank on its voyage and they never made it home. It's rumored that their spirits have stayed here because this is where they played their last shows. There's reports of staff hearing clapping coming from an empty balcony. The balcony is nicknamed the gods. This is where all the cheap seats were back in the day where common folk could go see the shows. And I've been up in that balcony. It's scary stuff. It's like super steep. If you have a couple of beers up there, you're doomed to fall. They've also reported hearing whispers and disembodied voices from empty rooms. Big, huge 200 pound doors shutting and closing by themselves. There's also testimony from the theater technician he was usually the first in the building and last out. I quote, I watched something rise downstage left and it was a stocky woman in a black dress. She seemed to rise up from the floor and disappear. It was only a second or two. There was no wave, no hello, nothing. He turned to his colleague who confirmed he had seen the apparition too and they both bolted out of the theater. It's now called the Burton Cummings Theater, named after guess who frontman and vocalist Burton Cummings. And it's still an operating and thriving venue till this day. As you can see, there's posters and ads for shows, including one about Phantom of the Paradise. Behind me stands the infamous Marlboro Hotel. It was built in 1914 as the Olympia Hotel originally. Apparently, uh, Winston Churchill stayed here, and even Arthur Conan Doyle performed seances in the basement. It shut down in 1914 as a hotel, but opened as a kind of a housing or a staging area for soldiers going overseas to fight in the war. It reopened in the 20s as the Marlboro Hotel as we see today. One of the most famous stories from the Marlboro Hotel is a woman named Edith Cook. She met a man named Albert Westgate, and he was actually on parole for murder. He became infatuated with Edith and he gave her a lot of lavish jewelry and promised her a big future on the west coast in Vancouver, but he couldn't deliver on any of this and he ended up murdering her in room 503. Apparently Edith still haunts the hotel. It's reported that women on dates sometimes when they come to the hotel, they see a floating apparition of Edith maybe trying to warn her. The eighth floor of the Marlboro Hotel is also said to be haunted. There was a longtime resident, an elderly woman who lived on the eighth floor. She was a piano player. She would play for the staff and other people staying at the hotel. Long after her death and the removal of the piano, people still claim to hear piano music echo through the entire floor. The Marlboro Hotel is closed down and is no longer in operation. And all three of these buildings, the Masonic Temple, the Walker Theater, now known as the Burton Cummings Theater, and the Marlboro Hotel are all within a block of each other. So downtown Winnipeg is super fucking haunted. Here we are in front of the Vaughn Street Jail in downtown Winnipeg. It opened in 1883 and not only housed men, but women and children who were deemed insane. So imagine women and children being in the same building as murderers and rapists. Imagine what happened inside this building. That's why it is believed to be haunted. All the sick things that happened and all the people who were executed on this location. 13 men were executed at the Vaughn Street Jail. Two of which murdered a farming family with an ax were executed here, as well as the gorilla strangler who was convicted of murdering 22 people. There's one story, an employee said that she was working here and giving a tour and that she saw a woman standing in one of the windows. She went up there to investigate only to realize that 
Well, first of all, there's no one in the place. And second of all, the window is about yay high. You'd have to have been floating to be in the window. Another reason this place is said to be haunted is because John Krevchenko was executed here. And legend has it that his stepmother brought a bunch of soothsayers and witch doctors to revive his body. Of course they didn't succeed, he didn't come back to life, but rumor has it that they got far enough in the ceremony that his spirit was risen and will never leave this place. I have taken a tour of this place and there is a really sick feeling in here that you're just being bombarded by these negative forces. It's really weird, if you go into one of these cells, it's like, it's just the worst feeling on the planet. It's a horrible feeling place, and that's why it's considered haunted. Good enough? That's good, that's, yeah. that's pretty good. So here's our last stop of haunted downtown Winnipeg, King's Head Pub. That's right. Because we're gonna have a drink now that we're finished. And there's not much backstory to this location as far as like any tragic events that might have caused the haunting. But there's a lot of stories about employees hearing footsteps when no one's there. Yeah, yeah. Dishes smashing from the chef. So we're gonna head in, have a drink, maybe see if we can get some footage and see if anyone has any of their own haunted stories at work here. And hopefully the bill won't be too scary. It might be the scariest thing. <laughs> well, no ghosts here, just the specter of an empty glass. And until next time, keep drinking. So we just came out of the King's Head Pub. We had a few pints, and uh, we talked to the bartender, and the bartender, he kind of joked, he's like, well, if you want any ghost stories, you gotta pay me. But we kind of got out of him that he hasn't seen any ghosts himself, but he knows that they're there, whatever that means. So that was our little tour showcasing some of Winnipeg's most haunted sites. There's some really interesting stories, really interesting architecture to see. Winnipeg was kind of a sister city to uh, Chicago, so there's a lot of interesting sites to see. Winnipeg was supposed to be a big, thriving city. That's right. And it didn't happen. <laughs> it started and then it kind of <laughs> fell in decline. We survived. We didn't get stabbed in downtown Winnipeg, so that's good. No, I think it helped that the locations were closed for the most part. <laughs> we hope you enjoyed our episode, and if you are a Winnipegger, feel free to post some of your own haunted stories in the comments. Yeah. If this is a success, maybe you'll see us do some other haunted locations in Winnipeg next October. So stay tuned for that, and keep drinking. Just not in public. You'll be arrested. <laughs> Now what do you guys think happened to the missing YouTubers? Well, I, uh, I heard they went missing in uh, downtown Winnipeg. Uh, they wandered off, supposedly. Supposedly? Well, they wandered off. Yeah, well, anyways, I've heard other stories, too. Uh, I heard a story about an old drunken bum whose feet never touched the ground. Yeah, well, everyone knows this area's been haunted. I can tell you I saw a mist or a goop or a goo come out of a dumpster down there. I couldn't tell you what it was. Ah, you're full of it. No, I'm not. You were drinking then. I wasn't drunk. We have an update on the two missing YouTubers. Turns out they were thrown out of the King's Head pub for harassing the bartender about ghosts. They were found two days later, still drunk, trying to break into an abandoned video store. They have been detained and are waiting court dates.